I'm Ty Burr. I'm Wesley Morris. And today we bring you the Green Hornet. Grim news, people. Grim news. Entirely grim news. Is this another big budget Marvel DC superhero comic comic movie? No. no. It's something different and weirder. Much weirder. <laughs> I wouldn't even give it credit for being weird. Oh, I'm, I mean, I enjoyed its, its weirdness for the first hour. It's, I mean, it's subversive in the, in in so far as its its source material is not. Well, yeah, you have to everybody say else's source. Material. This is the one superhero that never was part of the Marvel or DC universe. It started as a radio serial, became a TV series, and so it's sort of a free agent. So, you know, at one point Kevin Smith had written a script that never got made. So now we've got Mich uh, Seth Rogen um, co-writing the script and starring as the Green Hornet, a Green Hornet unlike one that you could ever imagine. Hey, it all, me, Kato. I mean, this, it's not here's the, the the idea is that what if a superhero was just an incredibly loud, obnoxious creep, and what if his, his sidekick actually was the one with all the talent? He'd be Iron Man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but, this, but, but he's so much more obnoxious than Iron Man. Yes, and that is part of my problem with this. I mean, yeah. it's both the convergence of this character and of Seth Rogen's Seth Rogen-ash. Right, right, which I actually found, it tickled me pink for the first half of the movie, because he, this is like to the superhero movie, what his, what was his, 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 his small cop movie? Um, oh, observe and Report. Observe and Report, yes. yes. It, is, it is a movie that a lot of people are not going to like, but in its own weird way is kind of gravely dysfunctional and... Yes, I liked how Gonzo Observe and Report is. I mean, it's a, it's a completely appalling movie on some level, but it it is trying to be appalling. And This movie is, is lovingly made enough to sort of be at odds with itself. Yes, in an interesting way. I, I do have to say, I, halfway through the movie, the entire thing falls apart and yeah, becomes I mean, just this big, clanky, stupid action mission. It's in 3D. It has a lot of obligations to meet on that yeah. front. It, it's in 3D, my, but you can't really tell. My principal problem with this movie is, is aside from how, how formally confused it is about not only what it wants to be, but how it wants to be made, mm -hmm. is the inclusion of Cameron Diaz as Seth Rogen's secretary. She's, who's, pep she's Pepper Potts, but she has right. no time for any of them. But it's worse than that, because at this point in her career, Cameron Diaz does not need to be a beard for two characters. And had they just, had the movie only been about either their relationship, their sort of... I'm talking about Kato. Pseudo, That's yes. played by Jay Cho. He, who's actually really very, entertaining. Very good. yep. Um, and good. But I find this movie kind of delusional about what it's actually about. Oh, it doesn't even work. <laughs> it just doesn't work for me. It works enough in the first half. Uh, I'm Ty Burr. I'm Wesley Morris. And that's take two.